Hi, I'm Camilla. And I'm Kane. And we are the, the Fi Resellers. Sellers. And today we have an update video for you. So if you've been following along for a while, you know that we went on honeymoon and we thrifted along the way and we paid for the whole honeymoon with what we thrifted. Mm -hmm. Well, technically we kind of reimbursed ourselves. Right. So we are going to give an update on how that experiment went, kind of some not totally final numbers because we haven't sold quite everything. We still have some things that haven't sold. We'll get into totally all of the details later in this video, but we wanted to kind of give an overview of how it went and our thoughts on it and just give you an update since you followed along from the beginning. So all of those thrift hauls, like hours and hours of thrift hauls. So if you love yeah. thrift hauls, we have seriously hours of it. So yeah, you we'll can, put that playlist up there and you can watch that. Exactly. So we're just gonna give kind of how it went and give you some of the numbers, not quite final numbers, but essentially final numbers of how it went. So it's been six months since we got married and went on our honeymoon. We spent $1,124.84 while we traveled all around texas so our honeymoon was essentially a really big road trip mm -hmm. and we went from houston to san antonio we stayed at a resort and then we went up to austin we thrifted quite a bit we loved thrifting in austin mm -hmm. i think that's where we got some of our best stuff mm -hmm. and then we went to dallas dallas fort worth we saw some of our friends we went thrifting more we went to the <laughs> yeah. garage sales and then we came back to Houston. And then the thrifting part of it, only the thrifting, the cost of all of the goods that we bought was $641.07. So that was the amount that we were trying to make back by selling these items. So in addition to the amount that we actually spent on the items, we wanted to make back the amount that we spent on hotels, gas, food, everything that we did that week. We ended up picking up 276 items to actually sell. We picked up a few other things just for ourselves, which you know, if you're a reseller, you know how that goes. You know, right. you're at the bins, you're at the thrift store, and you're picking up things for yourself, yep. even when you're trying to pick up things to sell. So that was the amount that we had picked up for the purpose of reselling. And right now we have sold 158 of those items. We have 118 unsold so far. Of those 118, we have 68 listed and unsold. So those are the items that we have listed, they've been listed for a while, but they just are waiting for the right buyer. Mm -hmm. And then we have 50 unlisted items. So those are items either are damaged in some way, and that's why we haven't listed them, or they are items that I plan to post on my Instagram, but maybe aren't seasonal right now. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the total of where all of these items are right now, you right. know, what's happening with them. Just to give you a sense of kind of of the total, how many have sold and how many haven't. It's not great that we have 50 unlisted items. That's also part of doing business is that you pick up some duds. You think you look them over very well. You know, you give them the once over, the twice over, and somehow you still miss the whole, the stain, the whatever. So, yep. Oh well. And then we sometimes also mess up the laundry where- Oh my we, gosh, don't even get me started on that. Yeah. The color <laughs> might run. And before we didn't get those little sheets that, that you know, catch the colors, Oh boy, yeah, it, it, it was pretty a painful. Couple. We ruined a couple. Of some good ones, some yeah. some really good items, and that's pretty painful. But yeah. on average, the items cost two dollars and eighteen cents. So, fifty unlisted items means about a hundred dollars worth of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unused, unlisted, unsold, but overall we did all right. So mm -hmm. let's go through some of those numbers. So the total profit that we made was $3,099.85. And that includes the items not sold. So we included the cost of goods for those items because truly that's what it costs to do business. Mm -hmm. We have to subtract those items that really didn't sell. And I think we should include that just to be transparent with you. So all that being said, after the honeymoon, we have profited $1,975.01. So that's pretty good. Hang it in there, strong. <laughs> Instead of spending money on our honeymoon, we basically doubled our investment, almost mm -hmm. tripled our investment, really. Right. So overall, that's pretty good. And considering that we do this reselling as part of you know our life, that we do this as a side hustle, picking up this many items all at once was really nice. We didn't have to go back out to source anymore for like seriously like two months. So it was <laughs> awesome. Right because we had all this good inventory. We had really worked hard for a week and it really paid off in our business. It really, 
um, having that consistent inventory paid off in growing our business in a considerable way. So mm -hmm. in the months since this honeymoon call and all the things that we picked up, our business has seriously just grown exponentially. Mm -hmm. And I really think it's because of the consistency that this afforded us, that we had this big stock of items, which is the problem we're running into right now because we have to keep up with sourcing at the rate that we're listing things. And this gave us a really good stockpile to just list from right. and enabled us to keep that consistency in our business, to have really good items to list consistently. That's really the key to a good reselling business. Mm -hmm. And I want to take a step back because during the honeymoon, we did enjoy ourselves. We did go to that resort that we talked about in San Antonio. We explored a lot of the river walk in San Antonio. We went through Austin, did a little bit there went to a few restaurants, stuff like that. And I think that's what motivated us to do this in the first place is that we really wanted to enjoy ourselves and not have to, you know, be so strong out about how much it costs. And we really truly enjoy thrifting. And so obviously that had to be part mm -hmm. of what we were doing because, you know, it, it's just who we are and, and part of why we're doing this in the first place, why we started this whole journey. All that being said, we did enjoy ourselves. We did thrift, yes, during our honeymoon, but you know, this was just a fun goal. We said, mm -hmm. okay, well, we're resellers and we've got this YouTube channel. Why don't we just do something with it? And so we did very intentionally think about it before we even got married, before we went on the honeymoon. Mm -hmm. It's something that we just wanted to do. So we had a whole lot of fun and hopefully you've had a lot of fun, you know, keep it up with us. So now let's talk about some notable items that we sold. The very first item that we sold was this CISM review manual. So it was a book, I think for a class or maybe some sort of something like that. Like a computer science test or something. Oh yeah. Like a certification test or something like that. Yeah. So we started out by listing most of our hard goods first and then went into clothes. So the hard goods definitely sold faster because obviously they were listed first. So this was one of the first items that we listed. It was also one of the first to sell mm -hmm. and it sold for $53.45 on eBay. Yeah, that was really good. Very surprising actually. Exactly. And it sold within a day. So definitely if you see that out, we would recommend picking it up. Our biggest sale, you might remember this, was our Sony Handycam that actually we bought for like $115 but as part of what we averaged out for this whole entire trip, mm -hmm. it was $2.18. But mm -hmm. overall, we'll just say that it's $115 just for, you know, the thought experiment. We sold it for $364.10 on eBay. That's what the buyer was all in. We were so happy about this. They had paid a little bit in shipping. And wow, we were so stoked about when this sold because it was in the middle of the day. You know, mm -hmm. this was kind of hanging over me because I was wondering if I had made a good decision on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it sold and I was so relieved. We were really excited about this one. Mm -hmm. Another really good sale was this Alexander McQueen zip up dress. So that actually took a little while to sell. It took about a month. This was one that we picked up at a Buffalo Exchange in Austin. That was very nerve wracking for us. We are definitely people who are um, low cost of goods model sellers. So to put out a lot of money like that on something was really scary. So we yeah. didn't get that many items. We got just a few things. And this was one of the items that we got. I think I paid $35 actually for it. But you know, again, we averaged out everything to $2.18, but it sold for $188.55, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that the Buffalo Exchange knew what they had. And I found out that it was like a 2011 runway dress or something like that. So I listed it higher and a buyer came out and gave me a, an offer on it. I think I had it listed at 300. They offered me 175. I accepted because I only paid 35. And also I have no idea what it's really worth. I'm not like a designer person or I'm, I don't know a lot about luxury. So I decided, you know, just to accept it. And I'm happy that I did. And you know, on that part of our honeymoon haul, where we went to Buffalo Exchange, we picked up a couple things. Um, I think we picked up four things in total. Two have sold, two have not. Um, two, I think, are mistakes, the ones that have not sold. So the one was this uh, skirt and it ended up being damaged. It had like some color bleed on it, which really stinks. So yeah. I don't know if we're gonna be able to fix that. We're very behind on our fixing time, so <laughs> yeah. we'll see. And then the other is this Free People quilted jacket, which I think maybe I didn't do very good comps on. I saw some good comps, 
but it was like $50 and I think I just was really wanted to feel like we had accomplished something by going to that Buffalo Exchange, mm -hmm. gotten some good items, but I do wish I hadn't spent so much on that. But again, when all I've reached out, it all I've reached out to $2.18. So who cares, right? <laughs> yeah, who cares? I don't know. Anyway. I think there's still some potential for that quilted jacket because it is seasonal. This is about the time that it should sell. Mm -hmm. And if we price it right, we can get rid of it, make our money back, whatever. But there's still a lot of potential. So hopefully it sells. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, so we're going to just talk about two more sales that were over $100. The first is this quilt that had these um, like southern bells with some parasols on them. Mm -hmm. And it was an applique quilt and it was in immaculate condition, like seriously perfect condition. I listed it for $125 and someone came and bought it outright really quickly in just a couple days. So I was really happy with that sale. And that, that quilt and another one really kind of got us going on the quilt game. Yeah. So that was really the start of that where we discovered, oh, quilts might be big money yeah. and we should maybe be looking at them a little bit better. So, Hashtag don't sleep on quilts. Yeah, that was a really exciting sale. I kind of wish that we had kept it because I just loved it so much, but, but we we're really... happy with the money. And then our last sale over a hundred dollars was this Johnny Was top. It was embroidered. It was Cupra Rayon, which is a keyword for Johnny Was things. So you want to include that. It's essentially like a vegan sort of so, and this top sold for $107.55. So really amazing sale. We picked up a couple Johnny Wise pieces on this trip yeah. and all of them sold really great. We were just really lucky to have found them. We actually found, I think I found three? Three. Mm -hmm. Three all together. I found three all together at the Austin bins, which was awesome. I was so excited. I was like, I can't believe I just like found so many tiny West pieces all in one bin. It was amazing. Yeah. So that was a really great day. But we haven't been to that Austin bin since. And we kind of miss it because we found a lot of great stuff there. Yeah. We usually go to the South Austin bins and that particular one was the North Austin bins. Mm -hmm. Both of them pretty good. So yeah. if you're ever in Austin, you should definitely check them out. Yeah, for sure. We had 16 items that sold between $50 and 88.70 is what we got in the spreadsheet. So under 100, but you know, pretty good. We won't go through them, but that kind of gives you an idea of, you know, at least 20 of our items mm -hmm. <laughs> in this whole lot did really well. And mm -hmm. I think as part of reselling, you kind of have to take the good with the bad. And we're really excited about a lot of these. You know, with all of these items, we're pretty optimistic with them. That's why we picked them up in the first place. Mm -hmm. But, you know, not all of them are going to be home runs. And I think that this is very indicative of what we usually pick up at bins anyways. We really wanted to get really high dollar items and, you know, high sale price. Our strategy would probably be different. You know, we really love the bins. We love digging. We love the treasure hunt. All of the things about the bins and it being low cost, right? The risk being very low. That's our strategy. That's our business model. And we sometimes just kid that we're bins trolls. <laughs> and we, we just love going to the bins. And so hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea of what you can find at the bins. You know, almost all of this good stuff was found at the bins. We had a bunch of sales that were between 15 and $30, a whole lot of them actually. So those are bread and butter. We we're still really happy that we picked those up. Those add, you know, all of it adds up. So anyway, let's go through some of the stuff that we wouldn't pick up. So we picked up a lot of CDs. The majority of them did not sell. Yeah, that so, was my fault, but yeah, eh, they paid for themselves. I guess. But the few of them that we picked up, they, they paid for themselves. I would not pick those up again. <laughs> right. Because even when they do sell, they sell very little. They sell for like $5. Right. And a lot of them were loose. I would not recommend picking up loose CDs. Keeping. Don't think of any loose CDs. So these CDs were in this big collection, you know, one of those, I don't know, like, folders uh, yeah. or whatever you call them. Yeah. I just picked out the ones that I thought were good. My fault. I've learned my lesson about picking up cool things. Okay, so I yeah. will not pick up CDs in the future. Well, yeah. I'll do the cops. Another thing that we probably wouldn't pick up in the future is we got this Samsung Deluxe blood pressure monitor because eBay is really strict about like medical devices. Even mm. if something is not necessarily something that you need a prescription for, they get really just kind of squirrely about it. And even if you sell it and then, and you still haven't gotten like a Vero 
for it. Um, eBay can come back after you've sold the item, which has happened to us where you've already sold the item. It's already, you know, received by the buyer and eBay sends us a message and says, you have a listing that's restricted for medical devices for some reason. And, you know, this is a warning to you. Right. So it's kind of tough because it's like, well, I already sold it. So like, I can't take it down, Whoops. you know? So, yeah. So I wouldn't pick up things like that anymore. Even kind of adjacent, things that I would consider adjacent to medical devices. We also picked up a lot of Levi's jeans on our honeymoon. We picked up some 550s, some 505s, some 569s, 510s, 721s, some signature slight curves. And all they these. haven't sold. And they haven't sold. I would recommend if, if I was out sourcing now, I would stick to just the Levi's that I really know. So the Levi's 501s, you know, those ones that I know people want and people are looking for. Yeah. I guess some of these others, I don't think people are really looking for right. them. The other thing that I noticed is that we picked up a lot of porcelain related things, you know, mugs and like small bases. I think we wasted our time with that. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't look at the comps. And really, I think that's the main lesson of all of these things that are still mm -hmm. sitting is that I don't think we took the time to do the comps. And mm -hmm. now after six months from there and you know, after mm -hmm. doing this for over a year, we are a lot more strict about doing mm -hmm. comps and, and looking at the mm -hmm. sell through rate and, and all of that. And that just comes with time and patience and you know, practice when you're going sourcing, not rushing through all of these things and making sure that you are looking through those sell through rates. And you know, sometimes you look at the possibility of a high sale price, maybe that's a good factor, but really the most important thing is going to be your sell through rate. And I say that because if you have an item that is really expensive, you can always lower the price, right? Mm -hmm. And that'll probably help it sell through. But if it's something that doesn't have such a high price, but has like a super fast sell through rate, that's something that we'd pick up more of. We'd, we'd rather pick up a hundred of these items that would sell through quickly rather than, you know, 10 or 15 super high dollar items. That's just the type of business that we're in. So we really encourage you to look at those sell through rates really look at your comps and make sure you're making very good informed decisions. Yeah, so really you just have to balance that sell through rate with that sale price. You want both of those metrics to be good. And one way that you can do that is you create rules around each of those. So you have a floor for the average sale price that you want, and then you have a floor for the sell through rate that you're looking for. So maybe you're, for us, our floor for average sale price is about 20 to $25. And then the floor for our sell through rate is about a 50% sell through rate. Mm -hmm. So we're not gonna pick anything up that's lower than either of those in when we're looking at the comps. Right. So you wanna kind of create sort of rules for yourself so that when you're outsourcing, you can look something up and kind of know almost immediately if you're gonna pick it up or not. Yeah, don't depend on the cool factor. Yeah, okay, don't depend on the cool factor. Guilty. Guilty. So part of this review was also to help us to see when the items that we haven't listed, what are we going to do with those? Mm -hmm. So all those items that are damaged in some way, are we going to repair them? Well, honestly for us, probably not. We're probably not going to repair them. So we need to have some way to donate them to kind of get it out and then basically take it off of our spreadsheet. And then for those items that we have listed, but haven't sold, we'll probably wait a couple more months. We'll discount them deeply mm -hmm. because by now they've been listed for between six and four months. So it's time to put them onto the clearance rack in our store yeah. essentially so that we can get those moving and get them moved out because it's been a while. They just need to sell. We just need to say sayonara. So you want to, with the items that you're picking up, you also want to have an exit strategy. So, you know, not everything's a winner. Right. Definitely not everything we pick up is a winner. We have to just acknowledge that and come up with strategies to make sure that we just don't have all this stuff that we yeah. just are storing in our house for no reason. Right. We need to make more room for other cool things. Well, maybe not cool things, things that sell through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so we want to make sure that we are moving through and we are a reselling business, not a storage business. So always have an exit strategy. Just take the loss. It's part of the business. It is what it is. Exactly. That's our wrap up of the honeymoon haul. We will hopefully sell some of these items that are listed, but pretty much we 
kind of finish that experiment. We're really happy with how it turned out. It was so fun for us and it was also fun to share it with each of you mm -hmm. who followed along and cheer us on along the way. Yeah. It was just a really fun way to build community and to feel like we were sharing our, part of our journey and our life with you. Yeah. Leave us a comment on the things that you're reselling for. We did this as a fun experiment, but it was a very intentional goal. We wanted to resell to pay for this honeymoon. So what are some of your goals? Let us know down in the comments. Yeah, and if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed and you wanna be part of our community, make sure that you subscribe. And to those of you who have been subscribed to us, we really appreciate your subscription and you know just you know tagging along with us, being here, watching our videos. We really appreciate you so much. We hope that you're doing well. We hope that you're achieving your goals and we're cheering for you. We'll see you later. Bye. But if anyone sees a quilt with that design as in really good condition, let us know if you'd like to just give it to us. Yeah, because we're the quilt couple and you should give us yeah. some cool quilts. Give us some free stuff. <laughs> I think I'll take that out. <laughs> and to all of those who are and to all of you who have been subscribed with us, and to all of you who have been subscribed to us, we really thank you. Okay, one more. <laughs> okay, 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 here we go, here we go.